Hi everyone, I'm Sean with SparkFun Electronics, and welcome back to the second episode of Getting Started with the Raspberry Pi. On the previous episode, I showed you how to load Linux onto the Raspberry Pi, do some basic configuration, and write a simple Python script which blinked an LED. The link for that video can be found at the end of this video, as well as below in the description. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to connect your Raspberry Pi to the internet and post something to Twitter. You're going to need the same basic setup as you had last time. The only addition is we need a Wi-Fi USB dongle. A link for one of these can be found in the description below. So go ahead and take your Wi-Fi dongle, plug it into a USB slot on the Raspberry Pi, and apply power. Make sure that your HDMI cable is plugged in and your monitor is on. So the easiest way to configure Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi is to do it through X Windows. So go ahead and log in. Remember your default username is Pi, and the default password is Raspberry. All one word, all lowercase. Once you have a console command prompt, go ahead and type start X, all one word, and hit enter. That'll start X Windows. Once X Windows has started, double click on Wi-Fi config, which should be an icon on your desktop. Go into manage networks and click add. For the SSID, Type in the SSID or the name of your network. In this case, I will use SparkFunds. Drop down and use WPA Personal unless you know that you're using some other type of encryption for your network. And TKIP is generally the preferred encryption. Your PSK is actually your password for your network. A lot of times you can find that on the router itself. And click Add. Go into Current Status. Click Connect and wait for the Raspberry Pi to attach itself to the network. Once that's done, you'll actually see an IP address appear over here. One way to test to make sure we are on the internet for sure is you can open up a console, double click on LX Terminal. You can type ifconfig. Notice in WLAN 0, that's our Wi-Fi dongle, you should see an INET address. So it's actually we've actually been assigned an internet address here. Another thing you can do is ping a known site, like Google. and that should come back and you should see actual ping requests or ping replies coming back for you. Hit Control C to stop that. So now we know we're actually on the internet and ready to go. Now that we have Wi-Fi configured on the Raspberry Pi, let's talk a little bit about Twitter. Twitter was created in 2006 by four gentlemen, Jack Dorsey, Evan Williams, Biz Stone, and Noah Glass. These guys got together and envisioned a way to be able to send SMS-like, cell phone-like text messages among small groups of people on the internet. They chose the name Twitter for their project. Let's see what that actually means. So, busting out our trusty dictionary here, we find Twitter. And keep in mind this was a word that was popular in the late 1800s, early 1900s, mostly used as a verb. Here we go. Twitter, to utter successive chirping noises or to talk in a chattering fashion. So if you've used Twitter before, you know that's quite a fitting definition. Users of Twitter can post short messages to each other, consisting of 140 characters or less. They can actually tag other users in their post by preceding that other user's name with an at symbol. This lets that user know that they've been mentioned in a post. Additionally, users can also tag certain keywords in their post by using a hashtag symbol in front of that keyword. This lets anybody search in Twitter for posts containing those keywords. So in 2007, Twitter saw about 20,000 posts or tweets per day. Only six years later, by the end of 2013, Twitter had over 200 million users posting over 400 million posts or tweets per day. So we can actually use all of this information. What we're going to do is just create a simple application using Python and interfacing with Twitter's API, or Application Programming Interface. Before we do that, we actually need to configure our account on Twitter to allow our program to post tweets for us. First, open up a browser and navigate to twitter.com. If you're presented with any sort of advertisements here, instead of a login page, click the bird in the upper left-hand corner. That'll take you to the main home page. If you haven't created an account, go ahead and fill in your name, an email, and a password, and sign up for Twitter. Since I already have an account, I'm just going to sign in for mine. Keep in mind, at the time of this filming, you actually need to have a mobile number attached to your account in order to make applications for Twitter. If you don't already, go to your settings and go to your account settings here to enter your mobile number. Once that's done, navigate to dev.twitter.com. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see Sign In. So fill in your username and account password. So once you're signed in, you'll see your icon in the upper right corner. Find that and click on My Applications. So once on this page, click on Create New App to create your application and fill out the form details. 
So the name is going to be the name of your application. Name it whatever you want. Give it some sort of helpful description. And you need to put in some sort of website here. It doesn't really matter what, because I think Twitter just uses it for statistics. Click to agree the rules of the road, and click down below to create your application. Now that we have the application actually created, you need to go to permissions and click on read and write, because if we just did read only, our application wouldn't be able to post to our account. Click update settings. Keep in mind that when you do this, Twitter might take a few seconds up to a few minutes to actually update your stuff. So if need be, sit here and refresh the page until it says read and write. Once done, go to your API keys. You're going to need the API key and API secret, and I'll show you how to copy those in later to your application. Down below, you need a, to create an access token. Once again, you're going to have to wait maybe a couple of minutes for Twitter to update. And there we have it. You see it down below. There's the access token and the access token secret. We're going to need those two long strings as well. Now, let's get started on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to make our Python application post something to Twitter. So back on the Raspberry Pi, we need to install a few packages in order to write our Twitter application. So double click on LX terminal and type in sudo apt-get update. That's going to update all of the databases for your apt-get and wait while that completes. Once that's done, go ahead and type in sudo apt-get install python pip. Pip is a Python package manager that we're going to be using to install our Twitter application or our Twitter package for Python. Hit enter and let that install. If it asks you if you want to use additional disk space, go ahead and say yes, type Y, and hit enter. Now that we have Python pip installed, we can use pip to install Twython, which is the Twitter package that we're going to be using inside of Python. So sudo once again, pip install Twython, and hit enter. Great, now that we have all of our packages installed, go ahead and close out of your console and bring up a file manager. We're going to create our first Twitter-enabled Python script. So in the home directory, right-click, create new, and blank file. Name it something appropriate, say, hello tweet.py. Click OK. And once that creates, right-click on the file and open it up with leafpad. So in here, we're going to write another Python script. What we're doing here is we're importing Twython, which is the package we just installed, and we're going to import the Twython module. This is where we're going to put our Twitter authentication keys. So write down app key equals single quote, single quote, and in between those single quotes, we're going to be copying in our application keys or our authentication keys. So just leave them blank for right now. So app key, app secret, OAuth token, and OAuth token secret just using single quotes and leaving them blank. We're going to come back to those in a minute. In the next line, we're going to create a Twython object and call it Twitter. We're going to feed it our authentication keys. So just type all of those in for the parameters. In the final line, we're just going to use that Twython object that we created. So Twitter.update status, and status equals some string. This is what you're going to actually post to Twitter. You can post anything you want here. Uh, we're just going to pick some random sci-fi quote. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Notice that I'm using a backslash apostrophe. If we just use a regular apostrophe or a single quote, Python thinks that we're trying to close the string. So you would just end up with roads where we. So instead, you need to use something called an escape character that says, hey, we actually want an apostrophe here. Don't close the string. So you will actually end up with we're going when it posts to Twitter. Trust me, it'll work. You'll see. Go ahead and save this and exit. Now go ahead and open up a internet browser and navigate to apps.twitter.com. If you're not signed in already, click on the sign in button and enter your username and password for Twitter. Find the application that we created for Twitter and go to API keys. And you should have the API key, API secret, and your two access tokens. So even though you saved an exit out of that file, go ahead and open it back up and it should open up in LeafPad for you. Find your API key, highlight it, right click and copy, and paste that in app key. So between your two single quotes, just right click and click paste. 
Do the same thing for API secret. Scroll down, find your access token, which is a really long string. Right click copy and put it in OAuth token. And repeat that process for your access token secret. So now save and exit out of your Python script. You can close out of or minimize your internet browser. Go ahead and double click on LX terminal to bring up a console. And now that we're in the home directory, we can just type python hello tweets.py. Go ahead and hit enter to run that. If everything goes according to plan, you'll actually see nothing appear on the screen. However, bring back your browser and navigate to your Twitter homepage, which in this case, it is twitter.com slash your username. And you'll see the post that we just created. And that's it. You've created your very own first Twitter posting Python script. We configured Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi, and I showed you how to make a simple Python application which posts something to Twitter. That's a lot to take in for now. So in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to take a temperature and humidity sensor connected to the Raspberry Pi. You're gonna take that information and then tweet it on a regular basis. You'll have your very own tweeting weather station. So make sure you stay tuned for that.